Today we're going to learn about genetics, which is the study of heredity. And heredity is just the passing on of traits from either one parent or two parents to the new organism, which we'll call offspring. Now, every living thing gets their characteristics or traits from either one parent or two parents. Some organisms, like bacteria, can make a copy of themselves, and the new organisms that are made will be an exact copy of the parent. When only one parent is needed to make offspring, this is called asexual reproduction. Now some organisms like flowers have both male and female parts and also have male and female gametes or sex cells. So they don't need another flower to help them make more offspring. In this case, flowers are reproducing asexually in a process called self-pollination. Here's an animation of how some flowers reproduce asexually. This flower has a male gamete, which is called pollen, and a female gamete, which is called the egg. The pollen, which you can see as the yellow circles, is transferred to the ovary, which is a dark purple structure where the egg is located. When the pollen and the egg join, the flower will produce offspring that will have the same exact traits as the parent flower. Sometimes flowers are able to reproduce with other flowers, but they need the help of the wind or other organisms like insects to help transfer their sex cells. Here's an animation of a flower reproducing sexually in a process called cross-pollination. As a bee gets nectar or food from the first flower, pollen gets on its body. When the bee moves to the second flower to get more nectar, it sheds the pollen from the first flower and the egg of the second flower can get fertilized by the first flower's pollen. Since the egg and the sperm came from two different flowers, the new offspring that they'll produce will have DNA from both flowers. When two parents are needed to reproduce to make offspring, this is called sexual reproduction. This happens in many organisms, like humans or other animals like these elephants. The offspring will have a combination of each parent's DNA, so the offspring won't have the same exact traits of only one parent, but will have a combination of both parents' traits. A man named Gregor Mendel was interested in how parents pass their traits on to their offspring, so he used pea plants to see how traits were passed on. How did he do this? Well, he used a paintbrush to collect the pollen from one flower, then brushed the pollen onto the ovary of a different flower. Then he waited for new flowers or offspring to grow to see what traits they would have. Why did he use pea plants to study how traits are passed on? Well, one thing is they're small and easy to grow. They can produce lots of offspring pretty quickly, and they only had seven traits that made them different from each other. Here's a table showing the different traits between the pea plants he used. As you can see, there are two different versions for each trait. So for example, the pea plants had flowers, and the color of the flowers could either be purple or they could be white. The seeds of the pea plant had two different shapes. So the seeds could either be round or they could be wrinkled. And the seeds were in pods, these pods, and they had different colors. So the pods could either be green or they could be yellow. So what Mendel did was he experimented on the pea plants to see what the offspring would look like. So for example, he took one parent that had purple flowers, and then he took another um, parent that had white flowers, and then he made them reproduce. So he took the pollen from one flower and then the egg from the other flower. And then he wanted to see what the offspring would look like. Would they have purple flowers? Or would the offspring have white flowers? And he did this for all of the traits. He wanted to see what the offspring would turn out to be. So what did we learn from Mendel's experiments? Well, we found out that we have DNA, and that DNA gives information about our traits and how our bodies work. So let's take a look at this DNA strand right here. If you can see, okay, the DNA is in different sections. And these are called genes. 
Each gene gives information about making a protein, you see here. And those proteins will determine um, how our body works and treats. So let's say this first section of DNA is a gene that gives information about making a protein that will determine our skin color. Let's say this middle section here, it's a, one of the genes that will give information on making a protein that will tell us what our eye color is going to be. Let's say this last section of DNA is one of the genes that would give information about making a protein that would tell us our hair color. So different sections of DNA is called the gene, and those genes give us information on how to make a protein that will tell us what our traits are going to be. We also found out that there are different versions of traits which we call alleles. So for example, with Mendel's pea plants, there are two different versions, or we call them alleles, for a flower color. Flowers could either be purple or white. For the trait of seed shape, there were two different versions or alleles. Seeds could either have round or wrinkled shapes. For the trait of pod color, there are two different versions or alleles. Pod colors could either be green or yellow. So let's look at an example at traits and alleles in humans. So let's look at the trait for earlobes. There are two different versions or alleles for earlobes. Some people have attached earlobes and other people have detached earlobes. Let's look at another example of a trait and its alleles. The trait for eye color has more than two versions or alleles. Some people have brown, some have hazel, blue, or green. So in this situation, traits can have more than just two versions or two alleles. Some alleles are stronger and overpower other alleles. We call these alleles dominant and represent them with a capital letter. Other alleles are weaker and are hidden by the dominant allele. We call these alleles recessive and represent them with a lowercase letter. So when you think of the word allele, yes, they are different versions of a trait, but we're gonna represent those alleles with a letter, either capital or lowercase. Let's look at examples using Mendel's pea plants. For the trait of flower color, Mendel saw two different versions or alleles. Some pea plants had purple flowers, other pea plants had white flowers. He took a purple flower parent and made it reproduce with a white flower parent, and all of the offspring had purple flowers. So Mendel said that the purple flowers were dominant to white flowers. So because of that, we will represent the purple flower with a capital letter. You can use any letter, but let's use the letter P for purple. White flower would be the recessive allele, since it was hidden in the offspring by the purple flower allele, and we represent it with a lowercase allele or letter. We'll still use the letter P, but make it a lowercase letter. For seed color, there are two different versions or alleles. Pea plants can either have yellow seeds or green seeds. When Mendel made a pea plant with yellow seeds reproduce with a different pea plant that had green seeds, all of the offspring had yellow seeds. Since the yellow seed color overpowered the green seed color in the offspring, it's the dominant version or allele, and we would represent it with a capital letter. Let's use the letter Y for yellow. Since the green seed is recessive, we will still use the letter Y, but make it lowercase. For stem length, pea plants can either have tall stems or short stems. When Mendel crossed a parent with tall stems with a parent with short stems, all of the offspring had tall stems, making it a dominant version or allele. We'll use the letter T but capitalize it to show that it is dominant. For short stem, we'll still use the letter T but make it lowercase to show that it is the recessive allele. What else did we find out from Mendel's experiments? Well, we have things called genotypes for our traits. Genotypes are a combination of two alleles or letters. 
Remember for sexual reproduction, two parents are needed. So the offspring will get half of its DNA from each parent. That's why our genotypes are represented with two letters. One letter comes from one parent and the other letter comes from the other parent. So let's take a look at an example. In pea plants, round seeds are dominant and are represented with a capital R, and wrinkled seeds are re recessive and are represented with a lowercase r. Let's say parent one, one of the plants, gave a capital R round seed allele to the offspring. Let's say parent two, the second plant, gave a lowercase r for wrinkled seeds to the offspring. So how would we write this offspring's genotype? It'll be a capital R and a lowercase r. But what do these letters mean? What trait would the offspring have? Would it have round seeds or will it have wrinkled seeds? And these traits, round or wrinkled seeds, we call them phenotypes. So you can think P for phenotype, P for physical trait. What trait is actually shown? So taking a look at this genotype, we have a capital R and a lowercase r. Okay, The phenotype would be round C because as long as you have one dominant allele or letter, it would represent the dominant trait of round seeds. That capital R overpowers the lowercase r. So we're going to see round seeds for the plant. Let's try another example. So purple flowers are dominant, and I know that because it's represented with a capital letter or allele. White flowers are recessive because I know that since it's represented with a lowercase allele or letter. Now remember, genotypes are a combination of two alleles. You get two alleles because you get one allele from one parent and another allele from another parent. Now, when we write these genotypes, sometimes genotypes can be homozygous. That means the two letters or alleles that we get, they're both the same. So remember, homozygous means same. Some genotypes can be heterozygous. That means it's a genotype that has two alleles, but they're different. Because hetero means different. So let's try this as an example. If we wrote the genotype as capital P, capital P, how would we say that? Is it homozygous or is it heterozygous? Well, how we would say the genotype is it's homozygous and it's dominant. The reason why is because the alleles are the same for homozygous and they're both dominant. Well, what's the phenotype? What's the physical trait? What color would it be? Would it be purple? or would it be white? Because it is homozygous dominant, it's going to be purple because as long as you have one dominant allele, one capital letter, it represents the trait for purple flowers. Well, what if we have a genotype and it's written as two lowercase p's? How would we say the genotype? Is it homozygous or is it heterozygous? Since they are both the same alleles, or two p's that are lowercase, we say it's homozygous recessive. Homozygous because they're the same, recessive because they're both lowercase. Well, what's the phenotype going to be? What color will the flower be? Is it going to be purple or is it going to be white? Since the genotype has two lowercase alleles or letters, that represents white flowers. If the genotype is written as a capital P and a lowercase p, how would we say it? Is it going to be said as homozygous or heterozygous? Well, since it has two different alleles, one is a capital P and the other is a lowercase p, we would say it is a heterozygous genotype. Now, if you see, I'm not saying heterozygous dominant or heterozygous recessive. Because by saying heterozygous, I'm already saying that it has two different alleles or letters. Now, what is the color? What's the phenotype of the flower? Is it going to have purple flowers or is it going to have white flowers? 
So it's going to be purple flowers. The reason is as long as you have one dominant allele, that's all it takes, one capital letter, it'll represent the dominant trait of purple flowers. That dominant allele, that capital letter, will overpower the lowercase letter. So let's try an example here. You're going to use this information at the top to answer these five questions below. So the trait for seed shape, there's two different versions or alleles. You can either have round seeds or you can have wrinkled seeds for those pea plants. And I know that round seeds are dominant because they are represented with a capital allele or letter. And I know wrinkled seeds are recessive because they're represented with a lowercase allele or letter. So use that information to answer the questions. So the first question is, what is the allele or letter that represents round seed shape? So the allele or letter, we're going to use R, and I have it given to you here. And we're going to represent it with a capital R because the round seed is the dominant trait. What is the allele or letter that represents wrinkled seed? We're still going to use the letter R, but in this case, because wrinkled seed is recessive, we're going to make sure that the allele is a lowercase r. What is the genotype of a heterozygous round seed? Now remember, for genotypes, I need two letters. One letter comes from one parent, the other letter comes from the other parent. Now because it's heterozygous, that means it's different. So my r's are going to have to be different, and it's still going to have to represent round seed. So that means because it has, um, it's represented as round seed, it has to have a capital R. And because it's heterozygous, it should also have a lowercase r. So how it should be written is a capital letter r and a lowercase r. Now let's make it a rule. Whenever we see heterozygous, always put the capital first. What is the genotype of a homozygous wrinkled seed? Now remember, I need two letters. So homozygous means same. And wrinkled seed, we represent it with a lowercase r. So my two letters are going to have to be the same, and they're going to have to be written as two lowercase r's. So the last question is, what phenotype, or we say trait, would be represented by the genotype if it's written as capital R, capital R? Now that's how we would write the genotype. How would we say it? We would say it's homozygous because they're both the same, and it's dominant. So we would say homozygous dominant because it's two capital R's and they're both the same. So what is the phenotype or trait for this genotype? Well, because it has at least one dominant allele, one capital letter, it represents the trait of round seed. So all you need is one dominant allele, one capital letter, and it represents the dominant trait, in this case, round seed.